Hello, Chameleon Academy. This is Bill Strand, and I am in Madagascar. I want to share an experience that we had uh, here. Uh, we were going to look for some uh, Nepenthes madagascarensis, which is a Madagascar pitcher plant. But as we were walking uh, on the path, we saw a female, first for Pardalis panther chameleon, digging a hole uh, to lay her eggs. And this has got me very excited because uh, seeing how deep they dig their hole in what substrate they dig their hole in the wild is exciting to me. And that is data that uh, can definitely help us with captive husbandry. Now, while she was digging her hole, it was relatively easy to sit and film her because when chameleons have their head down in the ground, they don't necessarily see you. So as long as we st uh, uh, were standing back, we would be able to uh, take photographs of her, video of her, and we wouldn't disturb her. Now, the one point where we will disturb her is when she turns around and is ready to deposit her eggs and her head comes out of the hole. Well. She went ahead and got to this point while we were filming, and so uh, she got disturbed and actually left the, uh, the, the laying hole. And so we felt very bad about that, but we left immediately on the off chance that she would come back to the hole. But <laughs> there was two positive unintended consequences of this. First of all, I was able to measure how deep the hole was that she had dug. Measuring the depth with a stick and then the stick with my glasses and then my glasses with a ruler when we got back to the hotel, it showed that the hole was three inches deep. And if you fill that hole with an inch of eggs, then that tells us that the babies are expected to dig out of two inches of soil. A couple of hours later, I came back to the site to check on her progress. Sure enough, she had come back to the hole, laid her eggs, and was covering up the hole when I got there. And so the other piece of information that we have is in the wild, yes, if they are disturbed while they are doing their egg laying, they will come back to the hole. And come the next wet season, we're gonna have 20 to 30 babies coming out of that path. Now let's go ahead and think a little bit about what we observed. Earlier in the day, I observed a, uh, a, a hatching. Now I couldn't find exactly where the hatching was, but I uh, found a bunch of babies scattered around uh, the ferns and they had the white sand stuck to them. And so obviously they had just, uh, just hatched, just crawled out of their, dug out of their hole. Looking around, I couldn't find the exact hatching site but this was uh, in the forest. It was in amongst the, the, the ferns and the trees and the soil was, there's a lot of uh, leaves on top of it. There was a layer of detritus, those uh, the decaying leaves. It was a uh, very light, sandy soil, easy to dig through. Um, that makes sense, but it was nothing like the spot that this female chose, which was in the path. It was hard packed. I, I tried to dig a hole in it and I found it was packed solid. And so it was an interesting choice that she made there in the path, packed solid and vulnerable. There was no cover and uh, she, she actually almost got stepped on. So that is an interesting choice and something that we need to consider as to uh, why do they make these choices? Do they just pick a spot? Uh, is it because panther chameleons aren't that picky? I mean, in captivity, they're really not that picky. Uh, or was there something about that spot that was special to her? Now, even though the soil was firmly packed, uh, it, it's still sandy and so it still will, uh, will drain, but it's difficult to, uh, to dig through both for her and the babies. And so this is just another example of how uh, all of this information that we gather from observing chameleons in the wild goes to our collective knowledge as we try to figure out these incredible creatures. So this has been a wonderful day uh, and I am so glad uh, I was able to see both a hatching and an egg laying. This is Bill Strand signing off. See you later.